All right, everybody. So I wanted to update you guys on the pruning that we've done, the formation of young fig trees that we've done, we've accomplished, that we said we were gonna do the beginning of the season. And it only has just one single stem, one single shoot. It's a single stem whip. So at a certain height and a certain point of the season, I already see pretty much the new fruit buds popping up out here on the, on the branch. So I'm not necessarily pinching actually to encourage it to fruit. I will be pinching it at some point in the summer to encourage it to branch out because I'd rather get it to a certain height and then branch it out. Now, other people have different preferences and they'd rather wait till the next season to do the pruning, but I see no reason to do that because if I were to do the pinching now, get this to then branch out, it's then gonna form new branches and those new branches will have apical buds. And the apical buds next year will actually have an earlier fruit set and an easier time fruiting. And that's when the fruit really matters at that point in the second and third years. So for me, I'd rather pinch now, form the, the, ap the apical buds. That way I don't have to do any pruning. I'm, I feel like I'm wasting some time. Now, since we've removed this apical bud, we now have more branches that have more apical buds. So the following season, again, I will have an earlier crop of fruits, typically a more productive crop of fruits, and an easier time getting my young tree to fruit. And that's the name of the game, right? We want to set up the form of these trees as quickly as possible with as little effort as possible. And doing that, I can do this pretty much in one season. Because this tree right here, this is called Sitcellus. This tree was four inches tall at the beginning of the season. It grew to about two feet in height. I topped it. And then now it's growing these new branches. So now we have this pattern this V pattern or Y pattern that I look for in all my trees. We're setting up the scaffolds of our trees. The same thing happened over here with this one. This one's called Hiverninka. Same thing. It started off at four inches off the ground, off the top of the soil there. Grew to a height. I topped it. You can see there's the scar in which I topped it. Look, this comes right off actually. And then of course it now branched out and put out three new shoots. There's one even right down there. Now here's the crazy part, the kicker of all of this. If your tree is still unwilling to really put out a lot of fruit after you top it, after you do the pinching, after you do that summer pruning, it's almost kind of a good thing because we will get some fruit. Like here we go on this Martinenka, I have about three or four fruits that formed after I topped it. Now. I then remove the top and because there isn't a huge fruit set here, a huge load of energy that has to be dedicated to that tree. And also I waited, I waited at the right moment. I waited until this tree was very strong and could handle actually getting pinched. Same thing with this, this tree here. As you can see, look, it had some fruits on it down here and then it grew quite a bit and it became really a nice strong shoot. So then I topped it. And in a month or so, this is now gonna branch out just like these other trees. If I did this on a younger tree or a weaker tree like this, you can see there's not that many leaves on it. The leaves are not really that big. Well, I'm not gonna get the branching that I want, right? So there is a caveat here. It's not like, okay, you remove the tip at some point in the summer and then it branches out in the way that I have here and I'm showing you guys, there is some finesse to this. This is a little bit of a of an art. There isn't really like, you know, this isn't a robotic thing we can just do zeros and ones with, right? But if you do this correctly, with a lot of these trees over here that I have, that I did this on, we now get the branching that we, we want. And here's the other kicker, is that I decided on a lot of these because they grew so darn well, I removed the tips again. I removed them again, guys. <laughs> And in specific climates, in a longer season climate than my own, by removing these buds, I will actually get more fruits. This is called rivers pruning. So we pinch at some point in the summer, it branches out and grows all these new shoots. And then on those new shoots, we form more fruits later in the season. Again, that's called rivers pruning. Look it up. 
There's a video, a number of videos I've done on that. We can increase our production by over 100% that way. So <clears throat> there's the, the point. And then I've, again, to go a little bit further is by removing this apical bud here on the newer branches. So I had one branch originally, then I pinched it. Now I have four on this particular tree. Then I remove on the healthier, very vigorous shoots, the tip again. Well, in about a month or so, or by the end of this season, we still have all of August for the most part, September and all of October. We got like roughly three months for these trees to resume growth a little bit and put out even a little bit more growth. And by putting out a little bit more growth, which typically can be a bad idea because we will not lignify our branches the way that we want in time, but we then will form more of these apical buds. And by having more of those apical buds, as I discussed, we then have a way more productive tree next year. And this is only done for most of these younger trees that we just looked at in one season. All right, everybody. So I wanted to update you guys on the pruning that we've done, the formation of young fig trees that we've done, we've accomplished, that we said we were gonna do the beginning of the season. We, guys, we showed you guys that clip talking about the different techniques and the things that I'm gonna do where I top the tree at a specific height, allow it to actually produce the scaffolds, the permanent scaffolds in the middle of the growing season with addition of food and water, with the right amount of light, encouraging it to grow maybe two to three, maybe even four scaffolds that we can have that becomes permanent on our tree. And then of course I showed you guys a little bit of an update of the trees and how they're doing. And then I went ahead and actually pinched them again. I actually removed the tips one more time and so I wanted to show you guys a couple trees and see how things a little bit ended up turning out. And um, so we have a variety over here like this one. This is called um, Paradiso Bronze from VS. And so you can see the main trunk. We topped it somewhere over there. It then produced these three permanent scaffolds. And then I went ahead, I think, and topped them again. And so the tree didn't grow all that much um, this particular branch did so you can see this one was topped here and grew about that much so not a ton since the last update the same thing happened over here with this uh what is this a particular oh yeah this is a, a type of celeste and so it grew quite a bit we topped it and actually it put out four or five you can see there's actually one on the back five scaffolds after we topped it which actually the scar is right there and then it put out more more of these branches and then i of course i went ahead and topped it again and so instead of just having the one we now have multiple here as you can see on this one so now we have multiple tips multiple growing tips and this is great because the more tips we have the easier the time we're going to have the following season getting them the fruit well, earlier fruits, higher quality fruits, and even just uh, in general, more fruits. So by doing this summer pruning, by getting the trees pinched and allowing them to continue to grow and branch out during the summer, we are now having more of these apical buds and more of these lateral buds so that next season, these trees are gonna be ridiculously productive. Uh, so here's another example here. This is unknown lion. This is a, probably a hardy Chicago type of some kind. And you can see over here that, of course, it did the same exact thing, branching out where we want it. And there's two actually branches down there. So same thing over here with this one. Uh, this one here is actually was done rather late in the season. This variety here is called um, Giacomo Rao. And so I picked this tree up actually sometime in the middle of the summer and did this very late and pinched it over here and it did exactly what we showed you guys in the the last clip there sometime at the uh closer to the end or midway through the summer and then now we're in the fall and of course it looks it looks great now of course there is not the level of lignification that we want here but i will not really be pruning any of these trees this is exactly what i want we got all the apical buds, we got the lateral buds. So the more of these we have, again, the better chances we have next year. The only thing left to do with these trees is actually to do some staking. 
So I am going to be bending these, these scaffolds that are now permanent on an angle. The more angle we give them, the more access to light that they have. And so all the new branches here that will form at the top and will branch out in all different directions from these points will now have more access to light when I give them this angle to these scaffolds that they want. The wider the trees can be, the more light they can receive. And so if I don't do that, I'm not really gonna see great success next season. This whole tree is gonna be rather dense and, and actually difficult to fruit. So we need to be doing that staking. And so all these trees per scaffold will basically get one of those, um, one of those stakes. Now we do have an example here of this tree that didn't actually root out. It was kind of a, um, or it didn't do exactly what I wanted. It was kind of a tree that wasn't as strongly rooted at the time when we did our, our pinching and our tipping at the appropriate height. And so the leaves looked rather big. The leaves, the leaves are rather healthy. Uh, they're looking like the, the tree was rather strong at the time, but you can tell it wasn't as vigorous or as healthy as the others that I did that you see this success with because the tree, instead of putting out multiple, it really only continued with the, the main stem here. Now there was a, of course, a smaller branch here, but that's only about three or four inches in height. We do have one that's uh, coming from the base as well, but so what I'm planning to do as well with this one, instead of just chopping all of this off and pruning it at a lower height, because maybe you guys want a lower height to your trees, get the scaffold set up at a lower height rather than getting the scaffold set up here, it would make the height and uh, the storability of a potted tree like this and all of these a lot easier. So instead of doing that and wasting all of this growth, I'm just gonna take a, a stake and bend this over. So again, this will be a permanent scaffold. And so now it's relatively around the same height as this other branch over here, which didn't grow very much, but hopefully from there and by bending this over, this sunlight or the tree is gonna recognize this added sunlight along this main branch here. And so all along this branch, we're gonna then have more, more growth points to form future scaffolds so that we can get a, a, a better fruit set. Maybe not next year, we'll have some decent fruit by not pruning this, but we won't have the best fruit set because we don't really have enough of these apical buds and lateral buds that have a lot of that energy to support all those fruits and allow the, the tree to really put out the quantity of those fruits that we're looking for. As I say, the argument is that instead of doing this heading back, you actually just let it grow as a single stem whip. And so by letting it grow as a single stem whip and then pruning it, let's say like this tree here in the winter time and pruning it back to whatever height you want, you're missing out on, on an entire season basically. Because by pruning it like that, yeah, you're gonna get nice growth the following year. And so there's an example over here I'll show you of this tree, which was a really nicely rooted out air layer. And so I topped it. And then from that air layer, it formed these five scaffolds. But this whole season has been a wash because almost none of these branches here have uh, fruits on them. Yeah, there's some up here at the top. It finally got enough light. It got its act together after being so heavily pruned in the winter. And so I may actually get to taste something off of this. I doubt it, but that's the difference. So you're looking at this, which of course is pretty nice in its own right, but you know, this is, didn't fruit in its second year. Whereas the trees that are over here that I just showed you, they're all gonna fruit in their second year and they're gonna fruit like crazy in their second year. So it's really important, uh, I think, to get this right because it's a, it's a huge difference. Now, uh, you know, maybe you can make the argument that of course, by doing it the other way, well, now we have more scaffolds and the scaffolds are rather strong. And so we have a better, maybe a better base, a better form to our structure. That's the only argument I could think of. But again, you're foregoing an entire year by, by not doing that pinching in the summer for the form. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching this one. Please hit that subscribe button. Check out our blog, figboss.com. So much information there. And it's, it's, such a great, it's become such a great resource. Uh, I'll see you soon, all right? Take care. We'll catch you guys for the next one.